Now that is what we call an impulse turbine. Another important class of turbines, uh, hydropower turbines are called reaction turbines. So reaction turbines, unlike impulse turbines, can operate while being completely submerged under water. So if you think of this Pelton wheel design, it is working basically in air. You have nozzles of water jets hitting the buckets, but the entire rest of the system is basically within, within an air system. Okay. So it is not operating under a submerged condition. Okay. This creates a design problem as well because you are installing this turbine at the uh, below the water level of your river and you still have to run it basically in an air kind of a system where nozzles are going in. Okay. But reaction turbines operate completely submerged underwater. There is no air involved at all. Now instead of a nozzle bucket arrangement, here you have two arrays of blades, a set of stationary blades that do not move, which are called stators, and a set of rotating blades attached to the turbine shaft, which are called rotors. So you have two basically blade, blade systems. One, the internal blade system is attached to the turbine shaft and is called a rotor. Outer blade, uh, uh, blade system is attached to the casing of your turbine and is called stator because it does not rotate. The function of the stator is directing the flowing water to the rotor blades at a proper angle to maximize the transfer of energy and to increase the velocity of water while decreasing its pressure. So the system is very, uh, the idea is simple, is very similar. You are increasing the velocity of water while decreasing its pressure head in the Bernoulli's equation. You remember P by rho plus V square by 2. So we are decreasing the pressure head and increasing the velocity head in that context. Okay. The other thing the state, uh, stator blade is doing, it is directing the water at a proper angle so the maximum energy transfer at the rotor blades happen from the water side to the blade side. So the low pressure high velocity water now flows through the rotor blade channels where it transfers its momentum to the rotating turbine and ex exits, this is not exists, exits at a low pressure, low velocity flow. So the low pressure, high velocity flow coming out of the stator blades hits your rotor blade, momentum is transferred and you get a low pressure, low velocity flow at the output. While the uh, blades rotate, run the turbine shaft and creates power output. There are two major types of reaction turbines. One is called the Francis turbine. This is the most widely used type of turbines in large hydropower plants. It's very efficient and capable of handling high volumes of water at moderate heads. So one of the advantages of reaction turbines is it can uh, handle large volume flow rates of water. Okay, unlike Pelton turbines. And Francis turbines specifically can handle very high volume flow rates of water at relatively moderate heads. So even heads lower than what Terper, Ter Pelton turbines can handle, Francis turbines can handle and at very high efficiency. The Kaplan turbine is used under some conditions. It's a common design as well. And it's a bit like a reverse of a ship propeller. We will see the figures in the next uh, slide which will make it clear. If you see the propeller of ships and speed boats, the Kaplan turbine design is like that. So it acts like a reverse propeller. A propeller basically uses the kinetic energy from the motor and converts it into a velocity of water which is used to propel the ship or the boat. Here the velocity of the water is converted into the kinetic energy of the shaft. So it's a reverse, a propeller running in reverse. And the advantage is it's capable of working at very low heads of water. So if you have a river where the inclination is very slight and the water head is quite low, but you have a large volume of flow, a Kaplan turbine is ideal for such conditions. Now, the reaction turbines are more expensive in general, but they are capable of handling a large throughput and are extremely efficient. So, they are good for large hydropower plants. Okay. So, uh, Large hydropower plants where a large volume of water has to be processed through the turbine every hour, every day. The reaction turbines are best under that condition. 
and they also they are uh, used because they are extremely efficient the frictional losses uh, are very small compared to pelton turbines so this is an example of a francis turbine uh, this is the internal set of blades that uh, the rotor blades the shaft is here and this is the kind of the blade structure that we are looking at okay and you can see here how this system works the water is flowing through your penstock pipe and there you have two blade structures the stators connected to the outer frame of of your turbine and these stator blades direct the flow into your rotor blade system these ones this leaf like blade structure and the water comes down vertically down through the pipe at the bottom so the water flows in gets directed by the stators into the rotor blades it transfers its momentum and then comes down at the bottom and this can also be seen here so this is the outer casing these are the stators or the guide vanes connected to the spiral uh, to the casing outside which directs the water into your rotors and then this rotors rotate and generate the kinetic energy in the turbine shaft that is converted into electrical energy eventually and the flow of the water is shown by the red arrows here so this is another ge version of a uh, medium and high head francis units this is the turbine section proper and this is the generator part with magnetic shoes here so the turbine shaft connects to the generator shaft and it rotates generating the electricity here this is the where the stator and the rotor system so this is the rotor blades these are the stator blades are generated so you can see that process of water stators going through then going into the rotor system this is your kaplan turbine and you can see how it looks like a propeller of a ship okay so this is ka francis turbine and this is a kaplan turbine and you can see how a kaplan turbine works the water travels down hits this propeller like blades which rotates and the water goes down and the this rotation of the blade generates the electrical power so it's it's a and these are the stators so there are still a stator section which uh, directs the flow of water into this rotor propeller type blades of the kaplan turbine rotor and then it kind of moves downwards okay so a very similar system but because of the low head uh, case the blade structure is different and looks like a propeller driven system so this is a low head hydropower with kaplan units so you can see again the generator shaft this is the kaplan turbine stator and rotor so the first uh, figure of the slide showed the three gorges dam in china uh, which is currently the largest hydroelectric power plant in the world it was completed in 2012 the dam is 2335 meters long so over 2.3 kilometers long and rises 181 meters above the river bedrock okay so the height of the reservoir wall is 181 meters from the bedrock okay the normal level of water is 170 meter above the low flow level so the figure we have seen here so the uh, height of the water column is 170 meters and it captures water over a catchment area of uh, more than uh, 1 million square kilometer so the water captured is over uh, 1 million square kilometer and extends 600 kilometer upstream so a huge region of this high plateau is being uh, water is being captured the reservoir surface area is 1000 square kilometer so it's a huge reservoir that is being created by this uh, dam system in this dam you have 32 francis turbines each 700 megawatt capacity so 700 megawatt francis turbines so each turbine can generate 700 megawatts of power when it running at full capacity and there are 32 of these turbines the diameter of each turbine is 10 meters the water head approximately under capacity conditions is 81 meters and the maximum flow rate is 950 meter cube per second for one turbine system so you need 32 of them so you can see how much volume of water is actually flowing there is one generator per turbine each with rated power of 700 megawatts as we discussed at 20 kilovolts the uh, potential 
and the maximum generator electrical efficiency is 96.5 percent. So you can see that the efficiencies of this uh, hydroelectric dams are extremely high. You are getting efficiencies of 96 percent or more. So the total installed electric capacity is 22,500 megawatts. So 22.5 gigawatts of electric capacity. Which is basically 30% of all the power utilized by UK at that time. The problem here is the river is highly seasonal. So output is typically less than 5000 megawatts during the dry season which runs from November to May. But when there is enough flow, the output is limited by the power generating capacity of 22,500 megawatts. So during the wet season, July to September, you have a large power capacity, whereas the rest of the time you have much lower power because the river volume flow rate is low. So the expected annual generation is 1000 terawatt hours together, implying a capacity factor of 50%. And you can see the math here. Okay. So that's kind of an example of a very large hydropower plant in operation in the world today. So I will stop here today. Uh, in the next class, we will look at a, uh, uh, another way of designing turbines. So we have not looked at in detail into how Francis turbines operates or their velocity diagrams. That will require an understanding of turbo machinery, which is too advanced for this class. Instead, what we will do is we will look at various types of turbines and use something called the specific speed to understand how turbines can be sized, what turbine to use where, etc. Okay, so that will be in the next class along with some worked out examples. Okay, thank you for listening and see you in the next class once more.